I'm happy to welcome back Justin Witte, who's here to tell us more about the show currently on display at the Cleve Carney Museum of Art. Welcome, Justin. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for coming to yeah, my no house. Yeah, no problem. So Good tell to see us, you. Tell <laughs> us about, we just saw each other. Um, tell us about uh, Edra Soto's show. So the, the show currently on display uh, at the Mackinac Art Center, the Cleve Carney Museum of Art, is by artist Edra Soto, mm -hmm. and it's called The Myth of Closure. So Edra Soto is a sculptor who lives in Chicago. And for a long time, she's been doing a series of sculptures based on kind of the wrought iron uh, architectural gates and porous cinder blocks that are outside of homes commonly in Puerto Rico, where she's mm -hmm. from originally. Um, and embedded in these sculptures, which look kind of like screens that hang on the wall and freestand, mm -hmm. there's little uh, viewing holes that look into um, little illuminated photographs. And in the past, they've dealt with kind of the history in Puerto Rico. She has a piece up at the Whitney Museum in New York that's gotten a lot of attention that deals with Hurricane Maria. But our show's a little different because it's very personal. And the myth of closure for her is her trying to find closure for an event that's ongoing. And that's uh, her mother dealing with Alzheimer's, who that she's had to take care of in Puerto Rico. So as you approach the sculptures in the gallery, and look through these view holes, you'll see pictures of her mother as a, as a younger woman when Edra was mm -hmm. a child. You see her childhood home, but you also see her older and infirmed and in bed. Um, and they take place in the different houses. The photos are from different houses and the works are named after different neighborhoods in Puerto Rico where Soto lived. So it becomes a very personal um, view into that life. But then you think about the name and there starts to be a lot of other meanings that come in that make it even more powerful. Obviously the myth of closure, meaning in an event like this, you look for closure, mm -hmm. but when you lose someone to Alzheimer's, they're still around, right? right? You, you, they've lost their memories and maybe loss of some of what you remember of them. But even when, they, but even when someone passes, there's not really closure because those moments, those peaks into the past, those views continue to exist. Mm -hmm. And if you further think about closure and the objects that she makes in the show, which are based on these gates and cement walls that are, their purpose is to enclose, to protect your house, to separate it from the outside world. But at the same time, they're porous. And in the show, you can come and look through them. So it becomes kind of a poetic way of pointing. There's really no way to block off these connections. The connections of an immigrant from the country they're from, from that past, the connections from anyone from their family or their history, air and time and memory flows through those closures. So it's really, it's the myth of closure with Edra realizing that there it really is no closure to this experience, the loss of her mother, or the, the ongoing loss of her mother. Um, but there's really no closure from your experience, right? From your life. We, th we think we can put things in tight boxes and separate chapters or locations, but there's always going to be that flowing back and forth. But so I it's saw a really the show, beautiful though, show. The, the, the iron gates are... Yeah. So you have that, that um, first impression when you walk into the gallery. They're very large That scale. you're like, yeah. look at these beautiful gates. You yeah. know, they're just kind of unusual gates, right? Mm -hmm. With the curves and things. And then I think I went in there when it wasn't even open yet, like yeah. right before. And and then I'm like, where are these? And then somebody said, peek in the, these little holes in the design of the metal gates, yeah. you know? And to me, what I felt was there, it's bright and bold and big and mm -hmm. the gates, right? And then you find the little peak holes within the iron design and you and it, it's almost like, to me, you're also peeking through the gate into the life of somebody else, right. you know, and into her past. Mm -hmm. And it's so intimate when you peek in, just the act of peeking in feels like you're doing something that's very selective and secretive and intimate and private, private. right? Absolutely. I and love I, that. I think that's the idea of that closure, right? Because it's also the idea that those will keep others out, but you're able to, to see in, mm -hmm. and she's providing you that view. 
and that's through just her generosity. Glimpse, right, just a glimpse. And even when, and you probably came before the text was up, so you may not have known that background story, mm -hmm. but I think even then you, you start to get a sense because you see the same oh, woman sure. at different times. And to explain to people who haven't seen the show, um, they're monumentally scaled works mm -hmm. that replicate these gates, but they're actually made out of wood. Her husband, Dan Sullivan, is a very successful woodworker in Chicago. He's done stuff for the Art Center. He did work on the Free, he made, his company made the Frida Kahlo bed for the Frida oh, Kahlo wow. show. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and they are covered, some of them, in a texture, like uh -huh. a plaster texture, reminiscent of the interior of a lot of these homes in Puerto Rico. But then you notice around some of them, there's heart shapes, very mm -hmm. intentionally. Those are based on literal frames that Edra found when she was at school at the Art Institute. And she loves the idea of how a frame can change a picture, but also it's the idea of framing an experience. Sure. And she's really presenting the show with love. I had a chance to talk to her during installation. Um, and I said, you know, what, what is it that drives you to, to make this body of work, this show? And um, she said, um, sadness. She said she had so much sadness from this experience mm -hmm. that she had to put it somewhere because she didn't know what to do with it. But it was also tied in with this love of her mother and her life. And it is a very loving show. So, <laughs> Well, you know, I, I have a friend who, who, you know, I lost my mom, so I get it. And, mm -hmm. But I had a, a friend who he lost his mom to Alzheimer's. Yeah. But it was a long, slow, yeah. slow process. And when she passed, and I was like, I'm so sorry, and he goes, I feel like I lost her a long time ago yeah. because she's not who she was. You know, she just wasn't who she was anymore. And it's such a, a horrible, hard thing to go through. It's you cruel. know, to it is yeah. cruel for all involved, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're they're not the same person, but yet you have this love and memory and empathy and you want to you need to and want to take care of them more. You know, it's mm -hmm. just hard. And so um, I think it's there's so many people that can relate to it on so many levels and you know she is an amazing artist and I think it's pretty exciting that we have her here because it's Absolutely. she's just blown up she's been you know just in the past two her months been featured in New York Times twice you know she was just featured in a, a fashion magazine New City did a big piece and she's the sweetest person and what I would say to what you were saying is the beauty and kind of um, uh, uplifting aspect of the show is that despite the cruelty of that disease there's also no closure on that history right and she lives on through that history and so for anyone dealing with loss that experience doesn't go away that person doesn't go away so we are having an opening this weekend okay um, uh, I, I don't know when this is going to air though that's okay because <laughs> the show goes on yeah. all the way through next. It goes through, through March fifth, yeah. so everybody can come and see it and and really do come see it because this might be one of those artists that you can say, I saw Absolutely. her show when. Absolutely. I mean, this is truly one of those artists. She's really magnificent and and it's sensitive and it's heartfelt and it's beautiful and it's accessible to anybody. Yeah, you should check it out. All right, thank you, Justin. All right, thanks for having me. Be sure to stop by the CCMA for this beautiful exhibition by Edra Zotto, open now through March 5th. For more information, visit the ccma.org.